Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Another frustrating day for Washington in a 33-22 loss to New Orleans. The voice of the Washington football team, Bram Weinstein, and I will break it all down. Our changes on the horizon, we discuss. You can follow Bram on Twitter at RealBramW and you can read my work on ESPN.com. But you know all that. So we're going to jump in a minute trying to dissect yet another frustrating day. Folks, I feel your pain. This is not how I thought the season would go. I expressed what I thought before the season. Figuring like you, they were going to build off last year. They have not. I thought they'd be inconsistent in the first half in large part because of the schedule. But they're really not. They're not really inconsistent. They're just bad. And they haven't even gotten to the toughest part of their schedule yet. Especially they're bad on defense. This is no longer anything other. They're just bad on D. And it's killing them. Bram and I will get into all this. And I'll always say, I appreciate you still tuning in and and listening because I don't take for granted that you're going to because I know how frustrating this can be. I, I, we know it. I hear your, I hear the frustration. So I appreciate you turning in. Anyway, here's my conversation with Bram Weinstein. Okay, Bram, after that one, at one point, I just kind of tweeted out there today, no words, because sometimes there's just no words that keep describing what's going on but now we're going to have to give a lot of them coming off this game. I mean, Ron Rivera talked about how frustrated he was in the post game press conference. Um, what is your level of frustration with what's going on here and what kind of confidence do you have that they can get this turned around? Uh, the confidence I have in it just has to lean on what they did a year ago. Um, and that's really, I think the only source of confidence because I think the next month is going to be very tough. Like this is going to be extremely frustrated and tear it down and rebuild the confidence and all that stuff. When Pat Mahomes is walking in here and then you're going to Lambeau and you got Tom Brady, you know, after a bye week Um, So, you know, the schedule, I mean, this schedule, we earmarked this early and I know like everyone, you know, makes fun of you when you try to predict wins or losses, but from the get go, I think it was pretty safe to say that in this middle of the season, they were going to run into a buzzsaw. Right. And that they were going to have to probably have a different record than they do to survive it. And so I'm nervous about it. And this one in particular is bothersome because the last two weeks they've played teams that have had struggling offenses and neither one of them. Well, I wouldn't say that New Orleans was consistent against Washington today. They just hit them on these big plays yeah. and these terrible moments. Um, which is different. Atlanta moved the ball like everybody else did, and that was frustrating. And this one comes down to another massive blown coverage in the secondary, and then a Hail Mary, and then, you know, when they needed a stop late, they couldn't get it. And that was the one time that I would look at them and go, this is where the defense needs to be um, the leader of this team if they're really going to win. And then the other side of it, too, is, and I'm sure we'll get to it, is – I kind of saw this coming with Heineke, frankly, um, after watching New Orleans' defense the last few right. weeks. Yeah, that there was a couple things about what they had done to this point that got me concerned. And that's why I really wanted Heineke and the offense to play with a lead and not from behind. And some of the stuff that I thought might manifest itself did late with him. Well, and, and we'll get to him in a few minutes. Let's get back. We'll stick with the defense for right now because – some of those plays were just disasters. And we'll start with the first one, the 72 yarder with Landon Collins. And one thing Collins said after the game was he was supposed to be back there deep, but they were trying to disguise a coverage and they quick snapped it. So they caught him out of position. Here's what Jameis Winston said when he saw the coverage of the, that they were in. He said he saw they were in quarters. They brought a little soft pressure. No one was in the middle of the field, but Deontay and that ball, but no one was in the middle of the field, but Deontay and that ball. So I put some air up on it. He ran under and got it. And then he was asked, when you see the safety looking back, you're just going with it. And he said it was about his depth. It's all predicated on his depth. He was probably about 12 yards. And his speed versus Deontay's speed is not really a comparison, meaning Collins. Now, of course, now that's one of the things I have a problem with, too, here, is you're using Collins in a situation where he's disguising. That's not what he does. I think that's one of the things that gets frustrating that you see Rivera talks about after the game, using guys in their best spots. To me, that's not what he does well. So I don't know why they keep putting him in that position. Do you? Do you? No, I don't. Um, I've been 
I don't know. I think everyone's kind of been saying this for a long time and been around the edges of it more recently that, you know, it's time for Landon probably to play in more sub packages or closer to the line where he can be, you know, when he tackles well, can be really effective. He's very quick, good instincts, good in the box type of player. I know he should be concerned be concerned that you know his size will ruin whether he could play there long term and i don't disagree with him about that um but there was clee Hudson running around out there today and he's the same size as him so i, I think i've been waiting for and i'm and maybe this will be it because you could hear the frustration in ron rivera's voice today and i think this is the one yeah i mean well this is the one where there's kind of not a lot of excuses like you know, New Orleans, just, they're not the same team anymore without Drew Brees, and especially with Winston at quarterback. They walked in here where if you watch them, you would get the feeling that Sean Payton was literally scared for Jameis to throw the ball deep ever. Um, they used Alvin Kamara as a lead running back. They barely threw the ball to him in the last few weeks. Like, they had become the 28th ranked offense. They had the fewest explosion plays in the NFL. And... I mean, I know it took a blown coverage and a Hail Mary to like double their amount of explosion plays in one game, but that's kind of on Washington and I don't think it's a mistake and it's time now. And I felt like this for a few weeks now, I've been waiting for when are changes coming and right. I feel like this is probably going to be the week because at some point they, they have to make them. Well, the other one is Bobby McCain and he was a guy that I know that the coaching staff really liked coming over from Miami and they refer to him as a ball hawk, which we haven't seen that at all, really. And he misses tackles. And the thing, this is where you either, either you're using guys in the wrong position or you have the wrong guys out there. And at this point, I'd be okay just saying, let's bring, let's put the Shazer Everett in. Let's bring up Jeremy Reeves and just going with him just to see. Because one thing that those guys didn't do a lot of last year was miss tackles. McCain misses one every week, it seems. So that yeah. to me would be an easy, would be an easy change. And I don't know if it's going to solve anything. But maybe at least you're doing. I don't want to. I would. I'm not a big believer in just doing something to do something. You play your best players, but I just question now who are their best players back there, especially. I agree. I agree, and I and I would assume that the coaching staff is um is is they got to be thinking this now too. I think that they have been given more than enough time to the players to um to perform better collectively. Um, you know, and I, every unit has been under scrutiny and all of them for good reason. Like in the, from the get go, the defensive line was not getting the type of pressure we expected. They were the first to admit that they weren't working in conjunction or coordinated with each other very well. And I actually seen, have seen improvement the last couple yeah. of weeks there, you know, the linebackers, you know, I think they came in as the weakest unit. And I know Bostic going out, people were wondering, you know, like, well, is that really a huge loss, you know, in terms of just on-field play? And there's Jamin Davis not playing very much today, which I thought was very, very telling that he, this, I don't know what his snap count was, but it couldn't have been very high. And I was, that was really surprised by that, you know, like considering that Bostic was hurt. And then the secondary has had blown coverage after blown coverage after blown coverage. And the missed tackles by what is supposed to be sure fire tacklers back there is a problem too. So it's all of them. I mean, it's completely all of them. And, and I at least appreciate that, you know, Ron Rivera does continue to say we need to put people in the position to make the plays, which he is, he's not, that means he's not shirking the responsibility of the coaching staff too. It's everybody. I mean, this whole thing is off. And like, listen, like we keep saying like they'll only go as far as their defense will go. Well, if they're going to have the worst defense in the league, not beating anybody ever, you know, like, no. <laughs> and this one, this one was the toughest one. I mean, honestly, to take of all of them, like you get beat by Herbert, you get beat by Allen and your defense isn't playing well. Duh, that's going to happen. Um, the fact that the giants, you know, performed as well as they did, I think was a bit of a surprise and maybe doesn't feel as bad now because Jones has been better this year. Atlanta struggled hard coming into that game last week, but at least it's Matt Ryan and Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts. And, and you can at least like write off like, okay, they got well and they play better. I'm sorry, but like new Orleans is a shell of what it was. Mike Thomas isn't playing. They don't really have many downfield threats. The line they was through the ball. Line was bad. They're missing two starters. Their guards playing center. Their best tackles not playing at all. You know, Winston is, hangs on the ball forever he's a turnover waiting to happen you could tell Peyton doesn't want him throwing the ball very much they're a run first team they're not even using Camara the way that he's really most effective which we saw today in the passing game and this team can't stop them I mean they just can't stop them 
I just, it's frustrating. It's really, really frustrating. And if this is not the one where changes don't come, I don't know when it will. And, you know, if this is the pro- they're going to give up 30 plus points to that offense. What are they going to do against the Chiefs and the Packers? <laughs> oh, well, here's, and here's a stat for you, Bram. Then you asked about Jamin Davis. According to Next Gen Stats, he had 12 snaps from defense. That's three yeah. more, three more than David Mayo. I just, yeah, I didn't see him out there very, very much. No. And, you know, like, and so I, I, that was a surprise. I mean, when I spoke to coaches last week, they, they didn't tell me he was going to play a lot, but you, they certainly didn't, you know, lead me to believe he wouldn't. Right. You know, so I, I don't, I don't, I'm really, I thought for sure this is the week with Bostick hurt that it's okay, Rook, let's go. And I got to, I mean, that's a serious question to ask. Like what's going on there? Why isn't he playing? That's, and, that's and I, it's an odd, it's an odd absence. And I, it is. And, and at some point then, it, you know, the next question though, is it, we all, we keep talking about the players, but then the coaching at some point, you know, if you keep, if you keep seeing the same mistakes, if you keep putting a guy in coverage who doesn't, who shouldn't be in a certain spot, meaning like a Landon Collins being back deep. Well, that's not, that's no longer on Landon Collins. That becomes on you, the coaching staff. And that's where I also wonder how much will be examined there. And I think, you know, they always say we're going to go back and look at everything. And, and I don't expect him to make some rash move right now during the season and all that. But, like, you certainly have to look at what are you doing as a staff. And Rivera said this after the game, what are you doing as a staff to put them in the best position to succeed? Yes. And I don't think that that's always happening. Like, I just – do you? Clearly not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think – I mean, there's you know, not. I think, yeah, it's not along, like, I, I think we've been saying this all along. This is collective. Like, there's no one to point to here and say, well, if you just take Landon Collins off the field, they'll be fine. Or if you just, like, you know, get a better linebacker here, so you'll be fine. No, I think it's it, – the whole thing is just not been right all along. It's just not been right. And that goes for the coaches too here. Yeah. And that's why I, I'll reiterate, I was glad to hear Rivera say we need to put them in the right position. He's at least acknowledging that like it's everybody's part of the problem and it's not just them or he's not just, you know, throwing the weight of the issues on them. I do think it's kind of everybody. And yeah, I, I, I don't know what, obviously don't know what the answer is, but I do feel like it, it, I'm surprised we haven't seen changes yet. I really am. And, and now after this one, I will be really surprised if there aren't some kind of positional changes that are coming. And, and, I, and I think part of that probably stems from the fact that they do, they, they go back and watch these games. They look and they'll bring in a guy and say, look at on this play, you're right here. So if you just do this, you make this play and now, you know, we're getting off the field, right? That's what they're telling them. So I think to that, to this point, they could say, you know, it's this and that, but now I think after five weeks and after a game like this, you can't just keep saying we're close if we do this because you're saying the same things every week and, and you're not, you might feel like you're close, but the mistakes aren't getting cleaned up. I mean, every week, Bram, I'm saying, I'm saying one of the fears I'd have with this game is that they're going to hit them deep and they do every week to say it might be a different reason, but the same thing happens. So at some point it can't just be on them but that's why i think this week you may see something again i'm not i don't think we're you're nuts i know people want everybody to get fired after a game like this but i'm just talking maybe a defensive change or two maybe you see it finally you know something like that and i don't and it's i'll say this it's not going to be the answer because you can put jeremy reeves in there but jeremy reeves is you know i like the guy but he's a practice squad safety in the nfl i mean nobody else is banging down their door to to sign him so is he going to make a big difference? But maybe he'll be at least make a tackle that Bobby McCain keeps missing. They've, they've got to they, look. They got to do something. I mean, they got to change something. Change something. I also hearing Rivera say out loud that their confidence was shaken was, you know, I mean, only he knows that. I'm not down on the field for that one. And to hear him say that, um, that listen, I think you and I both know that's a big part of this. Like, yeah. This was an uber confident team coming in here for good reason. They have a lot of very talented players. They just keep getting beat over and over and over and over. And, and they can sit there and excuse everything they want or, or pound their fist and say, you guys write better stuff about us when we start playing really well. Well, we'll keep waiting to do that, you know, for that to happen. You know, yeah. we'll keep waiting for that to happen because this is now five games in. I don't know what their numbers are, but they have to be bottom three in the league in every important metric in, in the def- on, on defense again in the NFL. And I hate to break it to you, but two of the offenses that you played this past week are bottom third. Yeah. So it's not like they, they haven't played the good offenses yet. They only played a couple of them. Buffalo's That's and the Chargers. Like, 
that is the scary part. The last two weeks, we're talking about bottom third offenses that they've played, and they can't stop them. And this one was really particularly frustrating to me because the more I watched, the more I felt felt like this is the one. This is the one. Their line is messed up. They don't use Kamara in a because they don't because they're scared of their quarterback. They can't really. They're not going to take a lot of shots deep because they're scared of Winston. And they also don't have Mike Thomas anymore. So that no one, no corner scared of any of the receivers that they have. Yeah. And yet again, here it is, thirty plus points. Um, and I granted a couple of, you know, the Hail Mary is the Hail Mary, but like still, um, they couldn't stop them. And, I, you know, I, I am, you know, it's heightened code red concern considering who next week is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's funny because I know, again, we always talk about this, but like Rivera's thing is, look, you just go keep working, which is what we'd always hear from Marty Schottenheimer back in the day. But and it's what they said last year. But I think last year they knew that you had a soft part of the schedule coming up. So just keep your heads in it. And you look at the NFC East last year and you say, nobody's doing well. So if you can just do this, then you get through this tough part. Then here comes this part where you can run there. That's not coming up at this point. So they're going to have to make do in in the tough part. So it's not comparable to last year. Even what about with, um, you know, take away on, um, well, first of all, let's get to the hail Mary real real quick too, because that was a disaster. And I think that's, a big part of the problem here now it's funny because Rivera Ron Rivera said after the game that they were kind of prepared for whatever situation because they thought well maybe they'll do a quick out and get some yards that's what I thought they were going to do right that's what I thought they were going to do well that's clearly what Washington thought they were going to do because that's the coverage they had and that was the alignment they had was to protect that and they also were concerned with them dumping it to Alvin Kamara what they weren't you know and the players William Jackson Landon Collins both said they weren't prepared for the Hail Mary um, that still doesn't give an excuse why you couldn't knock it down or get in better position. But that, and, and meanwhile, Sean Payton said they're going to, they were going to try and throw two of them. So, you know, that, <laughs> that one, as soon as that happens, like, well, that, that was the ball game right there. I, I mean, it was so crazy because we were sitting there on the air in the second half and you go look at the box score at that point. They, you know, Washington had the ball double the amount of time. They had more turnovers or in the red zone four or five times and they're losing. It's yeah. just like every, every, like this one got away from them. And there were just a couple of moments that really, really got away from them. And that's one of them. Um, I mean, listen, like, if I want to say that we weren't prepared for that, I, I, I don't even want to hear that really from the players. Like, if you couldn't think it's a possibility, they might throw a deep pass with seven seconds left in the half <laughs> and no timeouts. I, I don't, I don't know how you're blaming anybody. Like, nobody should be blaming anybody for that. Like, like I think it's, yeah, I was sitting up there going, I even think I said on the air, they need 15 yards here quickly, no timeouts to get themselves a reasonable shot at a field goal. So I was thinking that too, but you know, once he's rolling out, like clearly he's throwing it deep. I don't know. I saw eight bodies down there. Play it right. Like, I don't know. Like, like it was the easiest Hail Mary I've ever seen. Coaches for that? Like, come on. Like, you know, I, that's again, collectively, that's everybody's fault. And in the end, I I got a hard time blaming the coaches for them not knocking down a Hail Mary. I really do. Like, come on, you know better than that. Like, come on, give me a break. This episode is brought to you by HP+. In a world full of smart devices, shouldn't your printer be smart too? It is with HP+. These printers know when they're running low, so you always get the ink you need delivered right when you need it. Plus, you save up to 50% on ink, so you can print whatever you want, as much as you want, any time you want. Huh, that is pretty smart. Get six free months of instant ink when you choose HP+. Conditions apply. Visit hp.com smart for details. This episode is brought to you by Hello Sign, a Dropbox company. Sign documents 80% faster with HelloSign, the quickest way to get e-signatures for every type of document, so you can celebrate all those successful moments sooner. If you hate waiting for signatures, HelloSign is music to your ears. Try it for free today at hellosign.com. Taylor Heineke, what, my thought coming out of this game, Bram, and hey, listen, I think it's kind of what we've talked about. He's a, he can be a really good backup for them. He's not the long-term answer. And it's unfortunate for those who want him to be. I, I love watching the guy because he plays with the moxie, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then there were just a hand, you know, 
you see what happens with the better defenses. They're kind of forcing him into some throws. Now, part of that is they're falling behind, so he feels like he has to force it. And then there's some other throws where it looks like the guy's got a little bit of a chance for something, but the ball just doesn't get there fast enough. What do you think? Was late today. Ball was late today. Ball was over late. and over. Ball, and he doesn't ball, have ball the arm. To be, he doesn't have the arm where he can be, afford to be late. I agree. Last week, ball, ball was there for the most part. You know, and like, and I, listen, this dude is really competitive. And very, I love watching. I love him. him. I mean, I, I, I love him. Yeah, I love him. I think he's great. You know, I think we've all kind of held back because we want to make sure that what we're seeing is what we're seeing. And you know, so. I watched, I rewatched the Atlanta game and this happens all the time, even in the bad ones, like you'll, you'll see things and you'll go, that wasn't that bad. Or this person played better than I thought he did just off live. Right. And then, it's why I always say like, I agree with the coaches. Like I need to rewatch it too, to Me really too. have a better do feeling it. about what I saw. And I rewatched the Atlanta game late in the week. And I actually didn't like what I saw. Like it, Listen, I love the heroics. The play to McKissick was amazing. Like that was all him. That was amazing. Yeah. And, but he was very fortunate because he forced there three were, or four passes yeah. that just didn't get picked. And, and I was watching New Orleans and I saw what they do. And they have one of the most bizarre numbers I've seen in a long time. They have like the second fewest sacks in the NFL, but they have the most interceptions that doesn't even really make any sense, right? Like, so they're not really getting to the quarterback, but they're picking people off. Like, so the more I watch them, the more I realized they're completely fooling quarterbacks into believing certain pressures are coming and forcing them to throw into coverages that they don't know is there. And they also have, you know, players that like Marshawn Latimer, when he gets his hands on the ball, he actually catches it. Malcolm Jenkins, <laughs> he actually catches it. Like, they have very good ball, you know, security type secondary players to go along with it and I started to get very uneasy about this game for Heineke and I felt like Washington really 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 needs to play with a lead because they really 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 need to not put it in his hands too many times because the Saints apparently are really really good at fooling coverages like really good at it just like Buffalo and, and that was that happened. was a fear yeah yes and it happened today, like off of the Atlanta game, off the Buffalo. Same thing happened in Buffalo. It was the first time, and again, he's such a small sample size, but the first time where I felt like suddenly the game got a little fast for him, and I know they were way down in that game. So it was hard for me to really be overly critical, but it was the first time I'm like, oh, he's not sure what he's looking at. And he's making some choices here, and some of them blew up in his face. And in Atlanta, you know, he got – lucky frankly a couple times with a couple of the choices that he made and then he made some spectacular throws the yeah. first one to McLaurin you know the play to McKissick spectacular plays and I love his feel for the game I love his competitiveness I really do like when he typically what he does run it's like feels like the right times he's got a really right. good feel for the game and all that stuff today he happened to be pretty late on a lot of throws that got broken up and he underthrew a couple of balls and then there was a couple of the one at the one yard line was a very bad decision. Yeah, that was terrible. And the one late in the game was also way underthrown. There were three Saints standing over there. I, I mean, I'd like to hear from him what he saw. Like, this was the seeing ghosts thing, but I've seen New Orleans do this to a number of teams already this year where they are, they're fooling people into throwing either things quicker than they think they, than they have to or into wrong coverages. And that's why they have so many picks. And I'm like, oh boy, because off of that Buffalo game, I'm like, if Heineke, if this thing gets sped up and they're down, he has to make plays, I'm worried. And um, it happened. You know, they got him in the fourth quarter. They got him. And, and that was my fear too, because he has not, you know, when he's, Buffalo's a top defense and they made him look like what he probably is, which is a guy who can be a really good backup for them in this league. And it looks like the game gets faster because the ball, the, sometimes that ball strength, the, the arm strength just isn't there for him. That will be the big thing that holds him back. He's got so many other things going for him, which is why it's amazing what he's done given his flaws. It truly is. Yes. You know, he's, I mean, I what he has done has been on competitiveness and just will, and that's all great and anticipation, all that. But today, he, you're right, he was late. And with that arm, he cannot be late. And there were a couple of times where, you know, to McLaurin, like it looks like it might might be there but it's late and the ball just doesn't get there like you know so i think that's why 
But listen, I mean, that's why they're going to be looking for a guy in the offseason. The question is, can he get them to what can he do for them right now? And I think when you're facing now, Kansas City doesn't have a great defense. So we'll see. But for, you know, what can he do now? Patrick might come back. Like, I, people have forgotten about that part. Like, it's been a month since he got injured. It was supposed to be a two month injury. I actually want to check in with Rivera about that to see yeah. where that is at this point. The problem is the next four games are the next four games, and it's ugly. So can they figure out to win a game or two here? I mean, I will say this, like, not that I trust me, not that I'm going to be picking them against Kansas city. Their defense has been awful this year, like last in the league awful this year. Now, if Washington's defense doesn't improve, like be a bipolar version of itself, I have a hard time buying that Washington's going to outscore them because this feels like Mahomes is going to put 40 up on them. But if they can be either be more competitive or get some breaks or play a little bit better, whatever it is, um, I, I don't know that Washington can't score points on those guys because everybody's actually scoring a ton of points on them too. So I don't know. Like, not that I'm picking them. All, all I'm saying is like, yes, this is a formidable schedule, but these teams do have flaws, just like everybody else. They do have flaws. The problem but- is they got Mahomes, Rodgers, and Brady, and, and we don't. You know, So their flaws can get covered up by Hall of Fame players, right? You know? and, and so, so we'll have to see. And, and in fairness to Heineke, too, you have your starting right tackle go down. You have a guy, yeah. Curtis Samuel, who can't stay healthy. Logan Thomas isn't out yeah. there. You're, you know, and, and so to move the ball like they did was actually not too bad. It's just that those turnovers and the one at the one yard line was a major killer because was a mistake. You, you have points there and you've got to be smarter. And like, I don't know what he saw in there. The guy was not. He was not in position to win on the route and the, and the corners know he doesn't have the arm strength. So he's got to be perfect with those throws or it's trouble. And again, enjoy watching him, but there are the limitations really show up against the better defenses. And this is just what, this is where that, that's why this stuff is not on him. This stuff is on the defense. Still, it always goes back to them until, they get, I agree. until they get that I just, figured like, out. Listen, I agree. Their defense has to be better than this. Like it has to be better than this. But I will say that, like, I was very concerned about the things that I saw today out of Heineke. Yeah. Um, you know, his inexperience really showed up at critical times today. And New Orleans has proven out that they, when they get all their guys back, like, I'm sure they don't want to hear it from Washington. You know, Marcus Davenport didn't play. Quan Alexander didn't play. Mike They're Thomas hasn't linemen. played this year. They're missing their best left tackle. Their center is out, which means their guard was playing center. Like, they don't want to hear it. Like they're missing Pro Bowl players on their team too, you know. Right. So and you know they found a way, and but this—that's what is, I think is so unfortunate about this. You know, they're catching the Saints at the right time. You yeah. know, missing a lot of people, and they like Washington have really serious questions at quarterback play. Like the more I watch Jameis Winston coming into this, the more I'm like he's not going to be on the radar after the season because this is not—he's not the answer. No. And, and yet there's the scoreboard with 33 up on it against them. I'm surprised that that's the number. And you know what? I think here's what everything you need to know about how other teams look at Washington right now. How many times did New Orleans walk out on the opening couple drives and throw the ball? Like they threw five of six plays, something like that. Right. They just threw the ball every play. This team runs the ball more on first down than anybody else in the NFL. Right. They've become a run heavy team. They don't throw the ball downfield. They were averaging 145 yards passing a game. Like it's woefully low. They have no explosion plays. They don't even run. They run three wide sets, 33% of the time. Sean Payton used to do 60% of the time as of a few years ago, Drew Brees, like they're a shell of themselves offensively. And what did they do? They believed walking out there, just throwing all over the place would have success against them. And I think that's very telling at how, how they have no respect for the Washington secondary or the pass rush at this point. And they proved out to be right. They didn't go back to some run game throughout the whole game. They didn't like Ken Mara got carries, but he had career high carries in back-to-back weeks. They didn't even bother going back to that. So they walked in going, we can throw on these guys. And if I'm Washington, this week, I would be very concerned that that offense that threw the ball on nobody by choice walked in here and said, we could throw all over them and did. And there you go. Not pretty, Bram. 
and let, we'll just end it there because I think after a while we're kind of beating a dead horse. So <laughs> we'll, we'll move on to Kansas City later in the week. But Bram, thanks for joining me and see what happens. Listen, I'll leave you with this because I need, I need to go on a positive note now. I heard Fred Smoot when I was driving over, he's doing the postgame show. And, and he said this, and I believe this to be true too. He said, this team is at least under Ron Rivera. They've played up to their competition. So, you know, I have to like lean back on that. They did do that. Like they did go toe to toe with Tampa Bay. They did win in Pittsburgh last year. You know, they were right there with Seattle, like late in the season. So maybe we got a shootout with the chiefs this week. Like maybe this isn't as terrible. But those are all games. From, so we'll those see. are all games from last year. And that's the problem. Yeah. So, we'll, see. we'll see. We'll see. Thanks, Bram. Yep. This episode is brought to you by Shell. College football is back, where the game day excitement is felt in the bottom of your soul and voiced at the top of your lungs. But wherever you share your excitement, ESPN and Shell can take your fandom further with savings up to 15 cents per gallon for Fuel Rewards members at Shell. Welcome home, football fans. Terms and conditions apply. See fuelrewards.com slash fuel your fandom for details. Shell is an official sponsor of ESPN College Football. ESPN, the ESPN logo, and ESPN College Football are registered trademarks of ESPN Incorporated. That's it for this episode. Thanks to Bram for joining me. And once again, thank you for tuning in. I'll be back with another episode on Wednesday. We'll talk to you next time.